Good evening, everyone. Senator, it's really a pleasure to be with you. And I just have to say a personal point of privilege that my childhood friend, Donna Bender, and I were on the stage together. It's really meaningful for me uh, at APAC. Um, Senator, I just also, I love the boots, by the way. Just noticed them. Um, <laughs> Senator, before we uh, jump into the conversation, I know that uh, Dan Koonsman, your Chief of Staff, mm -hmm. and Amber Bland, your Legislative Director, are here, uh, with whom uh, uh, our community works very closely. So I just also want to recognize them. <laughs> so Senator, let's jump right in. So Israel just celebrated its uh, 75th uh, birthday. You put out a very strong statement of support, which we deeply appreciate. Uh, and as a senator, um, why is the U.S.'s relationship so important to you, and why do you believe it is so important for America? Well, I mean, it's critically important for both countries, and I'm just so grateful for APAC for this commitment to strengthening the relationship that's been there from the beginning. You know, and we have a very strong and committed group in the Senate and the House, and it is bipartisan for this relationship, for the strength of the relationship. It's, uh, I know you have Senator Menendez here later this evening. He's chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee. We work closely together on, on, on all of these issues, but I'm so grateful for the relationships that I have with APAC. My first trip to, to Israel was with APAC, 2008, uh, Paul and Alice Baker, uh, yes. and they were ter just terrific. And, Beyond that, I mean, the, the, in terms of the importance of the relationship, you take a, take a look at two countries committed to the values and the ideals and the principles which we hold dear, of opportunity, liberty, freedom. That's so much a part of it, I believe it is. And I know so the United States and our commitment in the Senate and in the House is to make sure Israel has whatever it needs to defend itself, protect itself. And, you know, whether you're talking Iron Dome, you're talking about... Uh, uh, the David Sling, you're talking about. Uh, so all of these components are critically important. And then there is this enemy that every week they have a parade, and, you know, death to Israel, death to America, mm -hmm. and that is Iran. And every time that uh, Donna mentioned the book by the, former, uh, by the current Prime Minister Bibi Netanyahu, every time I've been with him and you start talking about issues, he said, but about Iran. And you talk about uh, a country that, uh, you know, Iran with a nuclear weapon makes us less safe, less stable, less secure, the world you know, in that way, and they're making advances in there. And I think that the relationship between the United States and, and Israel for world peace is critically important. And, um, you know, the other component of the book that really struck me, and there have been a number of articles written about Israel at age 75 and in mm -hmm. the international press, The Economist has had quite a few is just how far Israel has come powerfully. Economic power, military power, intellectual power, the cyber abilities, all of those things. Because when you think about peace and stability and you talk about different powers, diplomacy is important. But the, old, the approach to me is you know, peace through strength. And Israel has done that, the United States has done that, and we work together in that commitment, that joint commitment to protect each other, to fight for each other's causes, I think is critically important for this very, very strong, healthy relationship. So you, <laughs> so you mentioned your trip to Israel. You went with us in 2008. You've been on congressional delegation trips since then. Um, talk to us a little bit about some of the experiences that you had on those trips and how they've impacted your work on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Well, the first, the first trip with, with APEC was most, most instrumental to me because I got to really recognize how small and close together things were. I mean, you're Wyoming, you know, the, the Sea of Galilee. We have, there's a place we go fishing that's bigger than that <laughs> in Wyoming. <laughs> to go to and, and go around and, and see the Golan Heights, you say, well, you would yes. never, ever give up the Golan Heights, ever. You go to the northern tip uh, just at the, at the southern border of, of, of Lebanon, and you know that there are rockets there aimed toward Israel. You go down to Starot, and you see so close to Gaza, and you're there with the, uh, with, um, iron dome. With, the with the Iron, iron dome, dome individuals. And I'll get to that. 
you know, to go in and see the young people who are working as part of their military service at Iron Dome and been to the command centers there. Yes. And we walk in, we had, I think McCain was there the one time and Lindsey Graham and Tim Kaine was with us. And their eyes never left the screens. These young people, so committed, so focused. And but, think how young they are yeah. doing that kind of work. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And, and a commitment that shows yes. their, their, their faith, yes. their belief. But that first trip was one that really got to see how close the things are together. I mean, between the Mediterranean and the, and the West Bank, in one area, like maybe seven or eight miles. Uh, and realizing that you know, rockets sent from Gaza or you know, how close Tel Aviv is to Jerusalem. And of course, the historical and religious side of it as well. As all, all was very impactful. My wife was on that trip. The, the additional, the political trips, you, you travel with John McCain, it's a, it's a circus, it's a rodeo. Because <laughs> I got my boots on, you know. It's a, and, and going back and forth, and I mean, there was one time Lindsay and John and I are there, and we were meeting with Netanyahu, and then John Kerry was coming in and out, trying to do some of his diplomacy, and we were getting ready to leave, and Bibi says, no, 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 don't leave, I gotta see John Kerry again. Oh, no, 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 please don't make me do that. <laughs> I, mean, I could tell, we could tell a lot of stories, uh, and of course, jo, right jo, well, Joe Lieberman is the best, you know, we would go to, with, with Joe, and uh, yes. lots of wonderful times with, uh, with, with those guys, they call them the Three Musketeers, but we yes. had wonderful trips with a number of senators uh, in, in Israel, but always learning, always seeing, what do you need, how can we help, what can we do better, uh, and uh, the people are so wonderful, it's just such a trip to... Opportunity. And how about the food? The, the, uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, Jim, we, yeah, Jim Inhofe had a favorite <laughs> restaurant uh, in Jerusalem, and I can't ever get it. We go there, David Singer's there from the New York Times. I mean, everybody, it's, it's very close, very tightly held together. You know, Ron, the former ambassador to the United Ron Dellums was regular, regular there, and Durham, I was there regularly. Ron Durham. Ron Durham uh -huh. was regularly there and had chances to visit with him. Very nice. Um, let, me, um, let me turn to um, a policy issue because as we look at the U.S.-Israel relationship, the cornerstone of that alliance is ensuring that Israel can defend herself by herself. And yet, as we know, there are members of Congress who support conditioning security assistance to Israel. So I have two questions for you. The first is um, where you stand on that issue and where you think the majority of senators stand on that issue and what that conversation looks like uh, in the Senate. Yeah. Well, as part of the omnibus, you know, there's a $3.3 billion that goes to, to, to Israel for all of these components uh, of that. We have a $31 trillion debt as a nation. There was a big discussion just this past yes. week on the debt ceiling and how to deal with that. Uh, you know, some of the members that voted against it said there was not enough money in it for defense and we needed to do more. And whether it was Israel, what's happening now with Russia uh, and with Ukraine, all of those are components of that, of how do you spend that money wisely. So there is that. I mean, it is, it is interesting as things shift in some ways, there is a strong bipartisan core of support. You'll see some isolationists saying we shouldn't be anywhere doing anything. Uh, you see some at a time where, um, with a climate agenda, this is we gotta get away from all oil and energy and get to re renewable energy in the United States so there's no reason to be in the Middle East anymore. Well, I, I disagree with both of those and I think we have a, and you may wanna ask Senator Menendez about that later tonight, but he and I agree that we need to do more, we need to make sure that the resources are there and they have been there. Uh, throughout in terms of the relationship with Israel. Do you think that the uh, conversations about the government spending levels uh, in Washington today will impact specifically security assistance to Israel and other assistant packages that are uh, integral to America's national security? Yeah. What does that conversation look like? Yeah. Well, the reason I, I don't think that it will impact it is because it's the th I've been here now in the Senate 16 years. Mm -hmm. It's what I heard the first week I got here. We can't do enough. We have done, we, you know, is there gonna be there? And Donna Bender kept calling, coming, you know, you're gonna make sure that the money is there. <laughs> uh, which is why the, the role that, that APAC plays in all of this, American-Israeli action to stay together to stay unified, to make sure that Israel has what it needs. And it's always been there, the money has always been there, the commitment has always been there. Now there's a lot of machinations of how we get there. There have been different relationships depending on who was in the White House. Mm -hmm. um, 
there was, you know, who, who cordially loves each other and who cordially detests each other. And we've seen it both. We've seen different rocky relationships. We've seen smooth relationships. And uh, that, I think that just, it's a marriage. It occurs, and you see this throughout. But I think it's going to be strong forever. Okay. So you mentioned Iran. So this is, I want to ask you about Iran specifically because uh, just recently, uh, the United States uh, and Israel uh, held joint military exercises to send Iran a strong message. Uh, and this was the last of many that have come before in subsequent and previous, in previous administrations. Uh, and, uh, and my question to you is, do you believe or do you think that U.S.-Israel joint defense cooperation is enough to deter Iran? Uh, what more can Congress be doing to establish deterrence in this area? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. The, the amount of effort put into these joint four-day exercises in terms of the tonnage of live ammunition that was spent was massive. Uh, you had sea, land, air, cyber, space, all of it included in these, in these, in, in these war games, if you will, yeah, to show we have a strong offense if they act. Um, Iran is trying to bump up, too. They're asking Russia for the, the S-400s, and the, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the 35s, the fighter jets. Uh, they're building a new, deeper tunneled area looking like that in terms of what we're seeing from satellite imagery for a bomb creation or production. And the centrifuges down at yep. 100 meters, and our bomb-busting uh, Bunker busting bombs can get up to 60 meters. So it does seem that we continue to go. I don't know if the window is closed or not. I mean, BB gave that speech at the UN where he drew the bomb and however, how long ago that was. The, so those things continue. It's a concern. Uh, I was against going back. Look, I was against the first uh, the the relation uh -huh. that, that President uh, Obama did with Iran. I was against and led a group of 49 senators to all sign off to say, don't go back to, to President Biden. So I can't Thank tell you, you exactly. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's getting, I mean, it's getting stranger out, out there with Russia needing the drones from Iran, Iran wanting the weaponry from Russia, how that all comes together. Um, just, you know, I think Iran needs to be stopped from ever having a nuclear weapon, period. Correct. And on that note of, uh, of the relationship and the, and the developing relationship between Russia and Iran, uh, and again from your perch at the, in the Foreign Relations Committee, um, what can Congress be doing uh, to break those ties between Moscow and Tehran? Yeah. Well, you're trying to interrupt inter the flow of the weapons the, 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 all the time. You know, you're trying to stop Russia. What, if, what do you give to Ukraine in their effort to stop Russia? What do you do with your Iran? I want to do more to stop Iran from exporting oil. The money that they have that comes in for there, you know, we know what they're using it for. Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis, to become a thorn in the side of Israel, to attack from the north, attack from the, 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 the southwest. All of those issues, anything that strengthens Iran, I think is bad for the world, and certainly bad for Israel, bad for the United States. So I'm putting stronger sanctions, go after that. You know, at the, uh, last week, the, uh, the IRI, the, uh, the International Republican Institute, Institute. Mm -hmm. that John McCain was so involved oh, yeah. with since we talked about it, uh, gave their McCain Award to the women, the women of Iran. And there was a, they, uh, and for that. Uh, there was a, a luncheon here to honor them, and a number of the senators were there, the, all in an effort to say that what, you, what you're trying to do, the women of Iran, in terms of democracy, opportunity, liberty, equality, that's what this award is about, and we stand with you against this regime. So you. you're, you're trying to go at it from yeah. a lot of different ways. So let me ask you about um, the Abraham Accords, which mm -hmm. of course have been a game changer in the region and solidifying and developing these, developing and solidifying these relationships between Israel and her neighbors. And of course, as everyone here knows and has been focused on, the big get is Saudi Arabia and the hope that they will join those accords. So again, from your perspective, what does uh, the US, what, what does the administration, what does Congress need to do uh, to, uh, to address that issue and to hopefully uh, bring Saudi into, into the accords. Because you'd think if Saudi Arabia is in, the, the dominoes start to fall and everybody uh, comes in. 
there's a book I tell interns and young people in my office. I said, you don't need to read the book, you just need to know the title. And the title is Inevitable Surprises. There's always some surprise that comes down the line. You just never know what it's going to be. To me, the Abrams Accord was a surprise and remarkable. I mean, the it's a, you know, moving the, the embassy to Jerusalem after so many promises by presidents one yes. generation to yes. another. Yes. Th you know, things that happen that are terrific. Uh, you know, the, the relationship between the current administration and, and Saudi Arabia is, is strained, frosty, come up with whatever descriptor you want. Uh, but as a candidate, President Biden made a number of statements about a pariah nation, and that's now come home to roost. Is a concern to me, and you didn't bring up China. China just played a role in bringing Saudi Arabia to open negotiations with Iran. Iran. And that, to me, is one of these surprises that I never an anticipated. Yes. The um, Saudi Arabia knows what they want to get involved with the Abrams Accord in terms of weaponry, in terms of nuclear, uh, nuclear program as well. Uh, kind of an opening bid, a high price to pay. And I think the negotiations are going to continue. I don't have the ultimate answer. I don't know if Secretary Blinken had any comments about that today. But that's the direction it's heading. And you're right, getting Saudi Arabia connected and involved and joining in, I think, would be a major game changer for all of us. Well, Senator, um, I, I want to thank you for um, your commitment not only to strengthening the U.S.-Israel relationship, but doing it on a bipartisan basis. Uh, and for taking the time to be here with this group. Our time together has come to a close, uh, and I just want to thank you on behalf of APEC for everything that you're doing, and I would like you to join me, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thanks, Marilyn. And thanking you as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. This has really been a pleasure. You're terrific.